Hi, I'm Ivy from DC Studios and before we will start this tutorial, I'd wanted to introduce your final version of this mix, so you will know what we are going for. Check it out. I also put in the description the link to download all materials from this track so you can practice with it. So let's start from reamping and DI preparing. Here I have a pre-recorded guitar riff and it sounds like this. We will use Revolver 4 for guitars just because it's mad, that's how it sounds by past. So it's just a DI. Let's now dig into the tone I use because it's mad. Simple setup you know 6505 head you know flat fill my stuff with MD421 this kind of stuff. I also have some kind of 808 screamer here so, sounds mad too. Anyways, check out video description, I will put that preset here. See this knobs? They will normalize our input output levels automatically. See? Awesome. Check out this cool pick up our MS button dude. This one is very important. Cause it will change your sound depending on your pick up our MS. So go to the internet. Find info about your pick up and set this knob to the correct level. It can change your sound very dramatic. I am using EMG81, so level for this one will be 2 volts. As you can see, I've recorded this riff two times, so let's pan it 100 left and 100 right so we can get this wide double track guitar's sound. <laughs> And don't even try to fuck the system by simply copying, cause then your guitars will be mono as fuck and it sounds so shit, you don't want that, you want a big and wide sound, don't you? Check out the difference. Pretty huge, isn't it? Here you can see the same riff, but I did hear some montage, so it sounds much cleaner. Let's unbypass bass and drums. Here you can see Steven Slate Drums 4, but we are not going to use it. I put it here just to write drum parts, so yeah. We will return to drums later. Trillion, probably the best VSTI bass you can find. Flat velocity, and I also moved it just a bit back to compensate delay of a plugin. It sounds like this. No any FX at all. Just a pickup sound with some release. Amp section is bypassed. Don't worry, we will reamp it later. And now before we will start export, be sure that all of your tracks pan to the center, cause we will render it in mono. Also check the levels, be sure that they don't clip. Solo the channel you want to render, name it and push mono export button. We will do this for two guitar tracks and bass. Mixing bass. 
So here is our mixing project. As you can see, I just copied bass track that we exported earlier to four different tracks. And now do you see this section here? It's a reversed string hit from here, you heard that thing at the very beginning of the demonstration, don't you? Let's begin from the first track called Bass Drive. We will use Bias Desktop. Guess why? That's why bro, check out this cool DC grind bass amp with a custom design, and yeah, I have shared this tone at the Tone Cloud so you can find it if you want it. Let's now apply other effects. Start with the EQ to shape our tone just a bit. C4 Multibin Compressor for Bass and Mids Control. H comp compressor just to get our dynamics little bit more stable. EQ again, just to cut some unwanted frequencies. Next, bass mid channel for mid rangy bass tone. Bias again, and here is the preset name. That's how it sounds. And now with some EQ. Low shelf, high shelf filters and some resonate filters. Now let's move to base HI channel. Bias again. Again, here is the preset name, so you can recreate this tone dude. Let's activate EQ and see what it does. This is actually a high part of our bass tone, so we don't want that low end. Don't forget to cut a resonates. DI tone. There is no any processors here, so it's just a clean tone. H comp. EQ that cuts some annoying frequencies. L2 Maximizer, we will use it as a limiter to make our dynamics flat. For sub-bass loudness stability, be sure to deactivate dither and shaping options. Levels Now all four channels send it to base group, we gonna give it some extra processing here. EQ to get rid of bad frequencies. Compressor and side chain mode. It drops the level of bass while snare or kick hits. The EQ again, to cut some sub bass and couple of resonates at highs. You probably noticed these delays here, don't you? Let me explain what it does. 
let's turn off this delay and send base MID and BAS drive channels to phase check group. Pan them 100 left and 100 right. We gonna use this awesome in phase plugin. And while I am setting up those faders you can hit the like button bro thank you I love you bro. Now let's check phase correlation. Hit this capture tumbler. You can see that we are out of phase bro and this is fucked up man. We need to fix this. Let's change a delay and find a sweet spot. There. So now our track and phase. I like to use this tool to find optimal delay time. In this case it will be 3.20 milliseconds. So now you know why wait what the fuck is that. Anyways, it's close to it. Now let's pan our tracks back in center and I will show you the power of delay compensation. Pretty huge difference, in our case, phase problems cause lose of low end, and delay compensation fixed this problem so now we can be more metal. This delay was applied to three bass tracks, all with a different time, which you can find by comparing tracks on that phase correction group. Bass drive track doesn't have a delay, because we compared another track's phase to it, so it's our starting point. Check out this NLS bro. My console gave us that warm low end. It's actually part of non-linear summing, but we will return to this later. After all this stuff our base group will go to mix bus. Mixing guitars. So now we have our guitar tracks. Right and left track rooted to guitars mix group, and that group rooted to guitars group, and that group rooted to mix bus. So let's start. I have EQ on each channel with the same settings, just to clean it up a bit and shape the tone. Now group processing. EQ to add some high end and kill annoying frequency. Now bro I've gotta tell ya, this BX Shred Spread plugin will make our tone a bit fatter. Check out this shred parameter. Our spectrum with EQ. And then we go to the next group. Guess what? Yep, cleaning EQ again. And now some interesting thing. We will rebalance our mid and side using this T-Rax compressor. Set the mode to mid side mode. You can see that volume of mid has been decreased, while side volume increased. There is no any compression going on, so it's just mid side balancing. Also, this thing drops the whole volume of guitars a bit and make our guitars sound a bit wider. Cleaning EQ again.
and again. This time we want to get rid of that whistly resonates. Here you can see pan and volume settings. Now let's see what we done and how it sounds in the mix. Mixing drums. So now bro we finally came to the most interesting part. I will use DC Mix Ready Drum Track. Check out this tone. Sound pretty good, isn't it? Note that all the levels are set to default. And it also don't have any channel processing here, so it's mix ready like G's. All these tracks you can see here has been sent to drums group. And this group then goes to our mix bus. The only processing here is Black 76 compressor by T-Rax, which slightly affect the sound. Just one or even less dB of compression. And it's also up the volume a bit. And from here we send our side chain sends to bass. From kick and snare. So let's listen to the channel separately. Ambient channel. Hi-hat channel. Kick. Overheads. Snare reverb. Snare room. Snare. Toms. Note that even that reverb channel already side chained from snare so they drops while it's attack. You don't need to do anything here, it already sounds pretty good. So if you interested in it, visit my channel. I have a lot of mix ready drum tracks which was originally composed by me. Or if you want your own track sound like this, my contacts are in the description. We will do this shit bro. Oh, and again here we have reverse effect, this time it's percussion. So it's actually this part, copied and reversed. FX. In this track we have some additional FX tracks. Let's check it out.
Let's start from reverse FX channel which is raw guitar chord, which goes through shimer reverb. First, I applied Sterone Chancer to narrow it a little bit. Then bro we have this saturation plugin, I use this preset, so it's kinda glitchy beat, sounds interesting. Valhalla Vintage, I will not dig into reverb settings, cause it really doesn't matter. The only reason I put it here is to fill the space. Check out the level. Bus. I also use Omnisphere. Let's have a look on the preset that I use in it. Well, I love this moments when my machine fucked up by plugins that open so long. But now you have a time to subscribe to my channel, bro. Again, thank you, bro. You are the best. Finally. You can see the name of the tone. I also turned off some shit here. And I also turned off even more here. Especially reverb. Processing. Enhancer to narrow. Gate to defeat the tail of sound. Reverb to fill the space. Envelope shaper to gain attack a bit. Compressor for dynamic stability. So just before we will go to the next part, check out these NLS plugins. I put it on our group channels, such as bass, drums, guitars, and also on single Omnisphere and reverse FX channels. Use some drive to bring the harmonics to our sound. Now all of these channels will be summed by NLS bus, so it sounds like more warm. You know, it brings something to your mix so if your mix suck, it will still suck with NLS. But it will suck warmer, more analog, more G's. Check it out. Anyways, I am not gonna use NLS bus for distortion and gain is at zero. So it's just summing. One moment, do you remember our phase fixing? I don't recommend you to put that NLS channel to your individual bass tracks if you have more than one. Cause it can cause some phase problems too, you probably don't want it, don't you? Export So now our track is ready for mastering. And before we will render it, let's compare the sound. Check out how it was before and after.
Let's turn off our limiter and see if we don't click without it. We have like 4-5 dB of headroom, which means that we don't clip at all. You might notice that drums sound a little bit out of the mix, but don't worry, we gonna glue and compress it at the mastering stage. I will explain this later. Now we are ready for rendering. Name your file, be sure that it's stereo. Mastering. So here is the track that we've just exported. Let's bypass all these plugins. Just the same thing. So we start from the EQ. Get rid of that very very low end first, cause we don't want it to affect our compressor, tape and limiter. Check it out bro. I don't hear anything, so it's kind of useless stuff here. We will return to Kramer and Isotope later, but now let's check other EQs. Some shaping, killing useful frequencies. Anyways, we will return to it when I will gain the volume. Activate the limiter. And just before we will start make our mix loud, let me explain you their knobs. This flux parameter is amount of tape distortion. There is also tape noise and flutter knobs. So let's unbypass it and see what it all does. And now multibin compressors settings.
So now let's check out these EQ again, this time compressed, saturated and all that stuff with. You can notice that our sound already at a high level, even without a limiter, so that's why is demonstrate you all the shit this way bro. We'll explain that later. So now let's see what those EQs really do. Note, that very very much of these EQ tweaking could need done on individual instruments on our mixing project. So there is much less pain in the ass. So I did it like this to illustrate you this thing. Now let's check that limiter. Transparent mode. Slowest attack. Fastest release. Unlinked transient stage and stereo release at 100. So now bro check out this awesome ISP knob. When activated it kinda emulate waveform after DA conversion and show you extra peaks that can be cause of it. So you probably want it to work. Now let's see how it works and why I set up the output level to minus 0.2. Let's set it to 0. Oh fuck's sake man we are clip that out man. Let's try minus 0.1 now. So now we kind of don't clip man, that thing here isn't red so you might think, ah okay okay it's good and we done but no man 0db is kind of very very close to clip, so I will down it even more, to minus 0.2. And now let's see at the Cubase meters. It shows us minus 0.2 which is the output parameter of our limiter, but remember, that this is not true peak level, just remember it. So now we sure that we don't clip at digital and at analog too and we are kind of metal as G's already but hey man, let's do the final check and see if we have good curve. And oh, I forget this thing bro. First of all you need to erase that DC offset shit on your mix track. So go here and I think you don't understand a word here sorry man. And once you enabled that algorithm you will not even notice it cause it happens fast as fuck and you like wow dude it's so fast man and I like yeah dude yeah. So now we are clean. 
Let's now test our track. Before the export be sure that everything is on. Set top start and markers and render it to the project. OK, now we have our track rendered here and let's change the color so it will sound more metal. Get rid of that old master volume. And now it's the reference time bro. Basically it's just a commercial good sounding mix that you want to go for. In this case we will compare our track with track from Cannibal Corpse's last album Skeletal Domain, 6 Sound. We gonna use that as a top 5 EQ. Notice that we dropped the volume. Now I will play our tracks and please, notice this our MS number, this is the loudness of the track, so we want to be sure that we are loud just as a commercial. Very close, so now test starts, I am gonna catch that curve from our track. So now we got our tracks curve. Let's do the same thing with our reference. So now red line is reference and white is our track curves. It's close as hell bro. Enough bass, not so much highs. Let's try now to match our mix to reference target curve. I always suck at this. Oh well I did it wrong again. So now let's tweak that smooth parameters. If set correct, it will make our mix sound even closer to the reference. But it's not always a good idea, I will explain it on another video so if you want that shit, don't forget to sub. Let's see what it does. I like the way it sounds, but don't get crazy with that smooth parameter, you don't want to match every single frequency, don't you? Kind of good spot here. So now we can go back to our master and do some changes to EQ according to this analysis. But man, I think we can do this shit with another lesson, so that's how you mix and master and phase check and reamp and do all this stuff to your metal. Now we gonna score man, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and if you want to help me with my channel, simply go and click some commercial here, you will help me a lot man cause just see what the fucking wall of text I wrote for this tutorial. Anyways. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Stay tuned.